children don't automatically know the uses and hazards of things around the house. So it's all too easy for everyday items to become weapons in their hands. As Patty Ritter found out on August 13th, 1992, at her home in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's okay, Ryan. I was giving my one-year-old Ryan a bath in the kitchen sink. And I was talking on the telephone, you know, chit-chatting. Yeah. Shanna Rathbone had been dating Patty's oldest son for about a year. During that time, she'd become close to his four-year-old brother, Alex. I was sitting in the family room with my boyfriend, Mark, and his little brother came in and asked me to help him wash his hands in the bathroom. So I walked him back. I feel like a member of the family. They've always made me feel like a member of the family from the first day I ever came over. That's just how the Ritters are. Sure. Whatever time you want to pick me up, it's fine with me. Mommy, I help myself with the scissors. What, honey? I looked at his chest. It was just a small drop of blood, so I took the washcloth and I dabbed it. Patty screamed horrendously. I looked at Alex and I saw this hole right in his chest. You could see straight down through his chest. It was just like a big tunnel, just straight down. Union Township Dispatcher Eileen Beatty was on duty by herself that afternoon. It was a very hysterical woman saying that her young son had been stabbed and he had pulled the scissors out himself. And I started to worry because I've always been told that if you're stabbed with something, it's best to leave it in. Rescue units with the Union Township Fire Department were immediately dispatched to the scene. I need you to hurry. She told me to apply pressure to the wound. Okay, please hurry. And I hung the phone up. Alex. Alex. And he was just like a limp wash rag in your hand. But I was getting more hysterical as the time went on. And then luckily, for some God-given reason, my husband came home. I pulled in the driveway and Mark came up to me and told me Alex had gotten hurt. I thought we'll take him to the doctors, get stitches, and then that'll be the end of that. Listen to me. What happened? He fell on my haircut. Let's see. Scissors. I pulled the rag away from his chest. You could actually look inside the chest. He was gray. His lips were blue. The last thing he said to me was, I'm sleepy. And that was, that was it. Among those responding to the call, was paramedic Jeff Jackson. Medic 41. About halfway there, our dispatcher called us back, advised us that the child has been turning blue, which immediately heightened our response. This child has been stabbed, he could be in a cardiac arrest, and we're thinking the worst. Yeah, he's real listless. I didn't know what to do for Alex. him. You're holding your son and on, he's dying. You know, there's nothing you're going to be able to do for him. Alex, yeah, I hear him. About that time, I heard the life squad. When the father first came out of the house, I immediately recognized who he was. Mark had been on the fire department with me a number of years ago, and ironically, he had left the fire department because he could not deal with injured and sick children. Okay, Dad, we're going to take care of him. What's his name? As soon as I looked at the child, I knew he was in a life-threatening situation. He was blue around the lips, blue around the fingertips, which immediately tells me that his body is shutting down. Your wife here, too? Paramedic Pam Kratzer asked to see the scissors. The blood on the scissors was two inches up, so we realized that it had punctured at least two inches into his body. That means they could have not only punctured his lungs and his heart, but it have also gone into his spine. Medic 41 to Union. He needed to have surgery immediately. You check on the availability of university air care. If they're available, have them respond. I felt this was this child's only hope. Okay, Dad, I need you to hand you Alex, Alex to me. Okay? The father did not want to release the child from his arms, and I thought, how could I ask this father to lay this child down, knowing that this may be the last time he can hold him? I need you folks to go right now and meet us down there. He's going to be. They just kept saying, "We need you to leave." Patty, can we go? And I can't help thinking that he was dying, and they wanted us out of the way. They didn't want us to be there when he died. 
Alex was taken to the nearest open field, where he was met by a university air care helicopter. The medical team on board included flight nurse Carol Downing. At the time, the child was in extreme shock. He wasn't breathing well, and his blood pressure was very, very low. The best thing to do was to get him to the operating room at Children's Hospital. As they were reeling him in, we got to take a look at him. You want to touch him, you want to talk to him, but you know you can. I thought that probably wouldn't be the last time that I would get to see him. TJ, let's get the sternal saw ready. At Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, four-year-old Alex went directly to the operating room where surgery was performed by Dr. Victor Garcia. Literally every second mattered because if you have uncontrolled bleeding in the chest, then the greater the likelihood that the bleeding would result in irreversible consequences that would ultimately kill the child. Anesthesia, we're starting to are fading. Once we opened the chest, we found that there was blood inside the sac around the heart. It only takes a small amount of blood in the pericardium to interfere with the ability of the heart to pump. They had to cut him from the top of the chest all the way down to his groin area. He had 45 staples down his little tiny body. He looked pathetic. I wanted to pick him up and kiss his whole face. Can you hear me? It was yeah. a sigh of relief to everybody. Even if he couldn't talk back to us, he was there and in a couple of weeks he was going to be fine. Stay here, cause say, giddy up, Flicka. Giddy up, Flicka. All right. A year has passed since the incident. Now I know why. We were always told growing up, don't run with scissors. If I had any advice to give to people, I would say make sure that the scissors are put up. Scissors and dad's tools and all those objects that we just use on an everyday basis and don't think about, we need to think as those as lethal weapons. I'm very proud of my son for coming and telling my wife he had fell on these scissors. If it wouldn't have been for him coming, he could have went out in the yard and died. Right. I thought about being an EMT, but that takes a different breed of people, I think. And they saved my son's life. I think the people are great. You train all your life to help people. And this was one instance that you really did help a child. We need black. Everything came together. It was not a one person or a one crew okay. effort. All the years of people we've worked on that have not survived, the bad times, the good times, this makes it all worthwhile. Oh, okay. When I see him out playing, it's amazing. Look at him. I mean, he's got a scar, but that's okay. That's a battle scar to him. He shows everybody. Yes, the doctor's cut me coming down to about there and my bones up there all right and i've been pushed to the again because they could hurt you look at the top of the tree i almost lost him and that's probably why he's pretty spoiled right now oh. i can't even imagine my life without alex i can't even imagine Ha, 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 ha.